hot as a furnace Holland got me jumping across the earth's surface 77 million pound bid So come and sign for Chelsea And score 30 goals a season, kid That's all I got Yo, what's going on, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you're all doing well today. Are you doing well? I really do hope that. Welcome back to Chelsea News, the nearly daily series here on Football Therapy, where I go across the rag, see what's being said about the Blues, giving you my thoughts, feelings, and opinions on the headlines. Two stories I want to get into, my friends, today. There's uh, obviously the big banger of Erling Haaland scoring overhead bicycle sort of scissor kicks in the league incredible amount of goals just a goal scoring monster heavily linked to Chelsea Football Club of course and there has been a headline in the last sort of 24 to 48 hours about Chelsea preparing a 77 million pound bid Ooh, precisely 11 million more than his release clause super cheap for a player that looks like he'll score goals Forever. Also, the headlines have been dominated with Callum Hudson Odoi after he was substituted as a sub, and there's been a lot of criticism, and I want to talk about that and sort of open the floor to you guys. So, in, get comfortable, subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to this channel, and if you do choose to sub, make sure that all important bells switched on so you get notified when I upload these Chelsea news videos and you can be the first to watch. If you want to show your sweet, sweet love and support, please do drop a like. That helps me out a lot. My shoulder just cracked. Maybe you heard it on the mic. Anyway, let's get into the first story of today's video. And I do want to warm into this content today, talking about Callum hudson Adoy. Of course, Chelsea had a disappointing draw in the Premier League yesterday to Southampton, won all at St Mary's, and of course, one of the major headlines and talking points from this game is Callum hudson Adoy came on at halftime and was substituted shortly after. Obviously, on the surface of it, this is a shameful thing to happen for a professional footballer, especially one that's sort of relatively high profile and in the eye of everyone. And it's supposed to really hurt. They spoke about this on Match of the Day at relative length. Um, the three, I think it was Martin Keown, Danny Murphy and Gary Lineker criticizing the decision from Thomas Tuchel and talking about how damaging it can be for a young player. But I feel like there's a sort of lack of self-awareness there as you exacerbate it, talking about it for so long a match of the day, going, yeah, really, it's really bad. It's gonna make him feel really bad. Anyway, they had a good point and they spoke about how not only is that a bad thing to happen for a player who seemingly didn't look like he was playing that badly from perhaps layman's eyes like me, but also, they talk about how Thomas Tuchel came out, spoke to different, you know, media outlets or interviewers, and he said the same thing every single time, how he wasn't happy with him. He wasn't happy with his attitude, his body language, and he wanted to get him off. So he doubled down. He didn't say it was tactical or he looked fatigued or he was concerned about him. He basically, like, fully threw him under the bus. Now, I'll understand and kind of respect back and even endorse this if Callum hudson Adoy was obviously really poor on the pitch but the truth is man he looked pretty good like when he came on Chelsea looked better going forward and with the ball he was certainly dynamic he was part of the attack that won us the penalty granted Mason Mount was our man of the match in that game but Callum the Doy was a good positive threat and when he got substituted for Hakim Ziyech I think we were all excited to see Hakim Ziyech come on you know we were all waiting for him to impose his immense talents into this team but and my eyebrow was certainly raised like that when Callum hudson Doy was substituted. Judging by the mood of social media as well, a lot of people had the same opinion as me. So with that, looking at how he performed and how he affected the game positively, I didn't really notice him not tracking back or anything, but I guess it's these sort of tactical things that a coach like Thomas Tuchel, who's obviously highly educated in the game, would notice, you know, to do a counter-pressing and stuff, executing his particular instructions. Stuff that perhaps the average football fan like you and I couldn't see. So fine, maybe, I do think it's important to lay it down, say, look man, if you ain't playing well, if you ain't working hard, no one rides for free on the Thomas Tuchel train. That's alliteration. So I can kind of get down with that, but ultimately when Callum hudson looked positive to me, to take him off and then to just lay into him in the media, you know, leave it in the dressing room. I mean, I, imagine if Frank, I mean, I said this in my match review, but imagine if Frank Lampard did that to Callum hudson and then went to the media and like destroyed him even more. Lampard would have been torn apart and dismantled. Granted, Tuchel's come in and done well, and I'm generally very happy with him. I need to see a little bit more in the final third, but he would echo that sentiment too. I don't know, man. I thought it was 
poor form really hopefully this gets washed away i know you could say yan yeah, you're enforcing the sort of narrative by reporting on it but i wanted to express my opinion and of course it's in the headlines and that's what I do here on Chelsea News on this series is I assess the headlines and give my opinion. So I'll be interested to hear what you guys think. Um, I did feel for the kid, but hopefully after we all sort of assess this, it washes away. Their relationship is fixed, if it is indeed broken, which I'm not sure it is. And then we move on. Do you know what I mean? So comment your thoughts down below on that situation and let's move on to the second story and talk about Erling Bro Haaland. Woo! What can I say about this 20 year old? He's only just left his teens. What an incredible player. Of course, he's coming off that brace in the uh, derby in the Bundesliga against Schalke. One incredible sort of like scissor kick, bicycle kick thing. Um, it looks amazing. He's obviously not, because he's so big, he's not the most graceful player, but he's probably the most effective player in world football right now in terms of direct, scoring goals, getting results, bullying your way through. My just incredible, was it 45 games and 45 goals for Dortmund? He's like literally got a goal a game at 20 years old in the Bundesliga, which is a high level, of course. Playing for a Dortmund team that are probably the worst Dortmund team in a decade, apart from like Sancho and stuff. Like, they're really, really poor and underperforming, yet he's got such an incredible goal return. Scoring in the Champions League for fun, you know, like to reiterate, he's not just bullying small teams here. Severe had seven clean sheets in a row in, before they played Dortmund in the Champions League. Seven consecutive clean sheets before they faced Erling Holland, who scored a brace comfortably. Two goals, bang, bang. So this kid is quite incredible. Like, of course, all these recent comparisons have been popping up of Mbappe versus Holland. It's going to be the Messi-Ronaldo thing again, isn't it? Or, you know, who knows? It's early doors. Uh, you know, Holland's obviously two years younger than Mbappe as well, but Mbappe's won the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's won the league with Monaco, so he's definitely got accolades. Um, in terms of being a direct goal scorer, Haaland's better for me. Mbappe's more silky players can play out wide and dribble and stuff. But if you're looking for a player to maybe come to the Premier League, who who's more likely to succeed in the Premier League for me? Well, you've got Mbappe, who's a little bit more slight, wriggly, um, can go missing, like he didn't score in the Champions League for nearly a year. That would have been unheard of for Erling Haaland. And you look at Erling Haaland, who's like six, three or four, big and tall, he's super fast, he's technical, and he's the most clinical finisher you will ever see. Out of those two, if you banked on one to succeed in the physical, fast Premier League, it would be Erling Haaland. He's got this mentality as well, that he's literally disgusted and offended if he doesn't score at least a goal in a game. And that's the kind of mentality you need to go into some, like, you know, like a climate like the Premier League that's so, so demanding. You'd bet the farm on him succeeding in the Premier League, to be honest. Which you couldn't really do with so many other strikers. Like Timo Werner scores a lot of goals and he might score a lot of goals for Chelsea still, but he was never that physical big gunman that we need up front. Drogba, Diego Costa. Since Costa, we haven't really replaced him, man. You know, since we won the league, we sort of Hazard carried us off, you know, onwards from when we lost Costa. But then he goes and we sort of fizzle out into obscurity. We need that big talismanic mentality monster to hate to use that Liverpool term, but it's a good term for this. And for Chelsea, uh, could of course be Erling Haaland and they have been linked heavily. Chelsea have already tried to sign Erling Haaland uh, at, after Salzburg. Matt Law confirmed that on the London is Blue podcast. He said, yes, Chelsea tried to sign him from Salzburg, but they didn't quite go for his wage demands because they wanted to see him a little bit more. So they let Dortmund pay those wages demands now of course they are very much convinced so the likes of Simon Johnson of the Athletic and other people have talked about yes Chelsea are very interested in Erling Holland not only have they already tried to sign him they want to sign him now this summer upcoming summer so very very exciting times of course the most notable thing about Erling Holland is he has a 66 million pound release clause next summer now, every single club would be in for him, you know, not that he'd want to sign for every single club, but you can imagine the amount of clubs coming in for him for that price would be incredible. Dortmund could be in serious financial trouble. I've already reported on this on a previous video about how they might sort of be inclined and have to sell him this summer to squeeze some more money. And reports the last 24, 48 hours are reporting that Chelsea are preparing or have prepared a 77 million pound bid. Now already that is 11 million pounds more than the release clause so that will get to the spark the interest of Dortmund but they will back themselves to squeeze even more out of 
Chelsea or another bidding team. You think about it, they wanted over 100 million or 100 million for Jadon Sancho. They'll want for, you know, Haaland, who looks just absolutely incredible, they'll want to squeeze as much money as they can, but they'll know as well that this release clause the next year will put them in a difficult position. So maybe Chelsea are coming in with a 70, 70, 77 million pound bid, which remember would be their record transfer fee because they spent, was it 72 on um, Kai Havertz after 71 on Kepa. So this would be their record, but you can imagine Chelsea would come in with this kind of bid thinking, they might still want more. They might want 87 or 88, do you know what I mean? They might want an extra 20 million on top of the buyout clause. Now, you think Chelsea will face stiff opposition for Haaland regardless? Even this coming summer, the likes of Manchester City or maybe a Real Madrid. I think the most obvious team that's got the money probably is Manchester City and he seems like the natural successor to Sergio Cunaguero for me even though City look like they can play absolutely fine with a recognised striker now if, if Manchester City get Haaland it's game over in the Premier League I mean it's game over right now really it's up to the other teams to get better to catch up with them but if they get him it's game over for me. So Chelsea, I really, really want them to. I think it will be a match made in heaven. Honestly, I really do think that. I'm pleased to see they're in for him. I mean, if he goes to Real Madrid or whatever, fine, fair enough. Replace Benzema, makes sense. Go and be good in Madrid. But if he comes to Manchester City, like, I mean, phew, the league is going to be dusted, in my opinion. So hopefully he comes to Chelsea. Chelsea are reportedly re preparing this bid and I think they'll probably go heavy in for him this summer. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this story down in the comment section below. It's certainly very, very exciting. Um, he's a, just an incredible player uh, and you, there's just no way he could flop in the Premier League, for, in my opinion. So yeah, let me, let me, all right, all right. <laughs> I can talk English. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below um, and I'll hit you up soon. Enjoy the football. I'll see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle. Bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry I don't. I love me baby.